New figures out today show that the number of people using mobile phones while driving has never been higher. Despite a change in the law bringing in tougher penalties in 2007, a survey has found that more people are now risking their lives and the lives of others than ever before. Emma Baker has been talking to one family in Cambridgeshire who have experienced the tragedy caused by a driver using his phone at the wheel. More than two years on from the ban, and wherever you look, drivers are still reaching for their mobile phones. Now a new survey shows the use of handheld phones behind the wheel is actually on the increase, despite the dangers. Very outgoing, very bobbly, um, up for anything really. A party girl. Mike and Sue Oldham from Sutton in Cambridgeshire know just how devastating the consequences can be. Their daughter Sarah died in January after the car in which she'd been travelling ploughed into an electricity pylon. The driver had been reading a text. Our life doesn't exist anymore, not, not, not in the same way. Um, we have a day-to-day -day existence now. We don't have a day-to-day -day normality anymore. Sadly, the Oldham story is not unique. Yet despite this, a new poll shows more and more drivers are breaking the law. The survey involved 14,000 London drivers. Of the car drivers, 2.8% used their handheld mobile phones behind the wheel. That's compared with 1.9% in 2008. Of the van drivers, 4.5% used handheld mobile phones whilst driving. That's a significant increase when you compare it to the 2.7% in 2008. In fact, more drivers are using their handheld mobiles now than three years ago. That was before tougher laws were introduced, with the threat of a £60 fine and three points on the licence. Laws that seem to be having little or no effect. So far this year, Bedfordshire and Northamptonshire police have fined around 1,500 drivers for using a handheld mobile behind the wheel. Norfolk, Suffolk and Cambridgeshire stand at around 2,000 each. And in Essex, a staggering 9,217 drivers have been fined for illegally using their phone whilst driving. The government needs to keep hammering home the consequences that you're four times more likely to be in an accident when you're using a handheld mobile phone. But also drivers need the real deterrent of fearing that they're going to get caught. And that can only come with more police on the roads. I think it's awful and I don't ever have my mobile on when I'm driving. I think they should be fined more heavily, really. But I would never, of course, uh, phone and use um, when I'm driving. But I know it's sometimes I'm tempted to. As the Oldhams prepare for their first Christmas without their daughter, many will today be asking what more needs to be done to drive home the message that mobile phones can kill. Emma Baker, Anglia News, Cambridgeshire. Well, it's just coming up to you at 13 minutes past six. For more news now from Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex, British Transport Police are still waiting to speak to a 25-year-old man after his car collided with a train at a level crossing in Norfolk. It happened at the Market Street level crossing at Tunstead near Norwich at around 9 o'clock yesterday morning. The driver of the car was seriously injured. He's still being treated at Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital. Drivers in Norwich are waiting for news on whether plans for a bypass to the north of the city will get the go-ahead. Norfolk County Council is hoping the government will hear the proposals in detail early next week. It's hoped the government will then release £21 million for improvements to a junction at Posick. Paul Mason, who's thought to be the world's heaviest man, will have life-saving surgery after Christmas. The 48-year-old will need to travel more than 150 miles from his home in Ipswich to Chichester in West Sussex to a specialist centre for bariatric treatment. Ambulance staff have been planning the journey since October. They need a special ambulance designed for patients of up to 70 stone. Well, earlier this week, we told you about the tens of thousands of starfish that were washed up on the North Norfolk coast. Well, tonight, another phenomenon. A giant sunfish, that's the world's heaviest bony fish, apparently, has turned up at Heacham near Hunstanton. Natalie Gray has the story. Seals are a regular sight in the water off Heacham in Norfolk, and retired taxi driver Paul Dennis thought that was exactly what he'd spotted, but it turned out to be a rare sunfish, the world's heaviest bony fish. And I happened to see this, uh, some fins flapping in the water. For a start, I thought it was a seal, but uh, uh, when, when I looked again, I thought, I don't know, that looks something different. 
Seeing the colossal creature was in trouble, he contacted the nearby Sea Life Centre in Hunstanton. Amazing thing, we've done our best, but unfortunately it was really sad that uh, after all our efforts, it must have been in the water far too long. I know it, got, it perished at the end of the day, yes. But what was it doing here? They're normally found in the middle of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans um, in more temperate climates, 15, 16 degrees or, or more. They're not very strong swimmers, so I'm sure that it's probably just drifted a bit too far north off the south coast of England. Uh, it's come up the channel, ended up in the wash, the water's too cold and it's got into problems. This one may have weighed as much as a sack of potatoes, but it was a tiddler really. Fully grown, they can be 3.3 metres in length. That's nearly 11 feet and the size of a small van. They can weigh up to 2,300 kilograms. That's over two tonnes and as heavy as a baby elephant. They eat mainly jellyfish and they're considered a delicacy in Japan. The specific name for a sunfish is a mola, which is Latin for millstone. And it's easy to understand why. It's greyish in colour, rough in texture and, of course, round. Thank goodness he has the photos to prove there was nothing fishy about his story. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, West Norfolk. I've never even heard of a sunfish before. Mm, Natalie Gray as well, our, our correspondent for the weird and wonderful this week. <laughs> right, sport now. It's which towns form in the championship may have picked up, but the goals appear to have dried up. Well, they haven't dried up for Norwich City, though. They're hoping to stretch their unbeaten league run to eight games. And that's where Donovan Blake starts our Friday preview. <laughs> The last time Norwich were at Yeovil, striker Grant Holt scored a hat-trick in a 4-0 Carling Cup win. But by then, the seeds had been sown for the departure of City's manager at the time, Brian Gunn. Now as Paul Lambert prepares for the trip to Hewish Park, he's already warning City fans not to expect a similar outcome, even though Norwich are unbeaten in seven league games. This will be no, no resemblance to what, what happened there. We're, um, we're playing well. You've all got a terrific result at MK Dons the other week, and we'll need to play well to win. City could start the game in fourth spot, but only if A.D. Boothroyd can steer Colchester to their first away win in League One since early October at Brighton. Can Steve Tilson stop the rot at South End? It's been tough going lately, three straight defeats without a goal scored, and they have to make do without defender Simon Francis against Hartlepool. He's suspended to the championship and Roy Keane fears he's becoming repetitive. Not surprising really when you consider Ipswich have failed to score in three of their last four games and he won't expect any favours from Blackpool who have emerged as surprise promotion contenders. We've got to go and win some football matches and um, we need to do that tomorrow because the chances we've been creating and missing, I've never known anything like it in my life I have to say. And after keeping his first clean sheet since October at Ipswich in midweek, Joe Lewis and Peterborough hope to secure their first win under Mark Cooper at Coventry. Donovan Blake, Anglian News. Peterborough United players will be raising money for their chosen charities over Christmas. Posh players will be wearing special shirts promoting Sue Rider Care, Free Kicks and a Spina Bifida charity when they play Cardiff on the 28th of December. The charities are delighted the club's helping to raise their public profile. We're a relatively small um, and unknown charity um, based in Peterborough. We are a national charity based in Peterborough. So the awareness that this something like this will create for us is, is just fantastic. The Essex cricketer Alistair Cook has been struggling with a back problem, but it hasn't affected his form with England and the bat on their tour of South Africa. Cook hit a half century today. That's his second this week in England's final warm-up game before next week's first test. He got 52.